it should prevent me from, you know, jumping to the abyss, but it doesn't. If you've played a video game ever, or, you know, even like saw someone else play a video game, you know about the idea of an exploit, right? Basically, someone does some, you know, like hacky thing, I don't know, and then they, they get like some unfair advantage, right? Like they get unlimited cash, they get like extra speed, aimbot, whatever. And a lot of these exploits actually are prevalent in certain games more than others. Like I know, for example, there's like, you know, these like anarchy Minecraft servers where people just like, they're allowed to cheat, right? So they use exploits like uh, no clip, Minecraft aimbot, I don't even know how that works. And so when I approach you know these exploits from that lens of a developer i would always have like sympathy for these developers right and i would just think like damn you know what actually yeah these are probably very hard to fix right until i began developing myself and then bro this this is so easy i'm not even joking the reason i'm even making this video is because i played a game and people were just hacking and no clipping all over the place and i'll literally just show you right now how to fix that exploit i'm gonna show you that if your game has any exploit whatsoever it's an embarrassment bro you should be ashamed of yourself so the first thing we got to do is we need to understand how does no clip even function let's say i make a part okay i'll set it to anchor just so it doesn't like you know tip over when we start touching it pause and so right now me i'm playing the game right and i can't walk into the part now the reason i can't do it is because roblox has built-in systems in place to basically prevent me from you know entering certain areas right roblox consistently checks that like hey if i'm moving am i touching a part that's meant to halt my movement right however roblox has to intentionally let the game know that hey this part is meant to stop movement, right? And because of this, you can actually disable parts from being collidable. Because parts literally have a property called can collide. And if I set this to be false, yeah, and so now if I walk through the part, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I can walk through it. So now you might be thinking, okay, but then how would a player exploit this, right? Because like, as I just showed you, right, I had to manually go and turn this off, right? So if I, if I turn off collision for a wall, that's my choice as a game developer, right? So how can someone turn this off as a player? This is where it gets a little bit more confusing. Okay, so I'll turn this back on. I'm going to start playing the game. And this is where I need to teach you the quick concept of server versus client, okay? In very short terms, okay? Right now, we are on the client. If I click this, I'm going to switch to the server. The basic premise of this is that the server is basically where all of the security checks should be made, right? So the server does all of the security checks. It ensures that, you know, the players aren't doing something they're not supposed to. And then once it finishes doing all of the security checks, then it says, okay, this action is allowed. And then it basically tells every single player, like, hey, this is supposed to happen, right? So I'll give you a quick example. How do players even walk, right? Like, for let's say, let's say there was another player over here, okay? And then that player walks towards me. How does my device know that that player is walking, right? And vice versa, how does that player know that I'm walking? Well, the way it works is that when I press a keybind on my keyboard, so in this case being W, right? I press W, I walk forward, and then it sends a message to the server and then the server does all the security checks you know the server makes sure i'm not like moving too fast and i'm not like jumping too high etc and then once the server does all the proper checks and says okay you're good to go then it tells everyone including me that yes this player moved so make sure to update your game so that this player moves, right? And then if the player thinks that you're, you're you know, exploiting, it's going to keep on rubber banding you back to the same position. Or like you probably played a game where you're trying to move. You're not, you're not even hacking. The game just thinks you are. You're trying to move and then the game just doesn't let you, right? That's effectively what's happening. It's the server not letting you pass. But then how does this tie into Noclip? Well, a very important factor, and my headphones are shiny as hell, damn. Anyways, the important factor that I forgot to mention is that the way these exploits even work is that clients can manipulate their games, okay? If right now I select the spawn location and I set its color to be red, okay? I see it as red. So it's red on the client to me, but on the server, where am I? <laughs> on the server, it is still white, okay? So basically the client can modify whatever it wants. If I wanted to, I could literally delete the base plate right now. But the base plate is still here. But my client believes that it doesn't exist. And this is where the danger happens. The client can send a message to the server with what it sees. So for example, right now, this client, right, if I if I were to jump over here where there's no base plate, even though there is a base plate on the server, so it, it exists, right? It's a real thing. Can collide is on. So I should it should prevent me from, you know, jumping to the abyss, but it doesn't. Because the client tells to the server, there's no base plate here, let me fall through. And the server, because it's not doing any real security check, says, okay, fine. And then it just lets me fall. And so with this in mind, there is literally nothing preventing the client from, you know, oh, oh, there's a wall that I can't pass through. Oh, no. Well, 
I'm just gonna click on the part and then I'll just set can collide to false. And now you can pass through it. And if I go on the server, it lets me. My player is inside the part, even though on the server, it should be collidable. Do you, do you, do you see how powerful this is? There we go. I've just created the simplest no clip exploit. Now, then you begin to ask yourself some questions, right? You're like, okay, well, how would I actually fix this, right? If the player can just lie, if the player can just manipulate the server, you know, tell them, hey, uh, this part is actually, uh, you know, I can pass through this part. Oh, that's weird. Look at that. He's like going back and forth. Okay, anyways, how can the server actually keep up doing all the security checks? Like Roblox has some built-in safety checks, right? But like there, there's not a lot. Clearly Roblox doesn't care if like this happens. I'm pretty sure actually what I could do is I could actually go to my client, right? So I'm on my client, right? I could just set my character's speed to be like um, 200, for example, right? And it's gonna let me. Even, even though I go on the server, my character speed should still be 16, but because I'm lying to the game, it, it just lets me do it. Look at this. So when asking the question, okay, how do game developers fix this? Or, you know, how would I fix this as a developer? Even if you aren't a developer, you know, this is just in inter interesting to think about. Well, the answer is just you do a lot of checks on the server. We can actually check certain things even if the client um, tries to avoid it, right? I know that makes little sense, but hear me out. Roblox has this feature, right? So if I had a script inside of the part, we can actually check whether this part has been touched by something else, right? So the way you do this is to say, you know, you, you get the, the part, which is script.parent, and then you say dot touched. This will fire whenever the part is touched. To actually connect it to a function, we got to do this, which will give us the other part, which you can call it whatever you want. I'll call it hit, okay? So whenever the part gets touched by another player, shut up, um, this will fire and it's going to give us the part. I can just print out the part i can print out hit dot name okay i'll print out the parts name there we go as you can see it's actually printing so humanoid root part um yeah handle handle whatever but then something to keep in mind is that if i switch to the server right now where all, all the changes you know should happen and i can actually turn off can touch i can turn this off and so now it's not gonna work and the scariest part is that on the client you can just set can touch to be equal to false look at this right so my my player is touching the the part but it's not working even if I, even if i switch to the server it's not gonna work however if i if i on the server i add a part right well then then it's gonna work funny enough if i actually add another part while i'm on the client that's not gonna work okay it doesn't work because my client believes that this part isn't collidable and so because of this the part isn't actually receiving any touched events. But then here's the thing, right? If I delete the part that, you know, I created, and if I take the part that I created on the server, so this is the server part, right? So when I move it, it actually updates, right? If I go on the client and if I take this part, and if I also set it, uh, you know, can't touch to be false, right? Well, then what's gonna happen, right? Is that when I move it, right? nothing pops up but the reason nothing pops up is because again i am moving this on the client and my client believes that this part cannot be touched okay if i switch to the server however if i take this exact same part now it works so okay now we're getting somewhere right so what we've just learned is that if the player sets a part um you know can touch to be false well then if the player touches that part it's not going to function right even if even on the server right if i move my player around it doesn't register, okay? But if we create another part, even if that player tries to say, oh yeah, no, uh, this part is actually, um, you know, it cannot be touched, uh, well, the server doesn't care, okay? So there we go. We actually just found a secure way to ensure that even if the player lies about a part being touchable, it will always be touchable because what we could do is whenever a player joins the game, we could just create a new part like this, like, you know, some big invisible part. We can just attach it to the center of the player, right, to act like a hitbox. And then no matter what the player says, as long as we don't change this part on the server, this will act as the player's hitbox. And so now we can actually always know when the player touches something, right? And so as you can see, all it took is just a couple minutes of just creative thinking and, you know, a bit of research, you know, a bit of playtesting. And we've actually just figured out how to bypass the player's lies, right? So whenever a player joins, we could just attach on the server a part inside of them, or like make it invisible, you know, make it like not collidable, but make sure that can touch is equal to true. And then now that part will let us know when the player is touching something, right? And then there, from there, what we could do is we could just say, okay, if that part is touching a wall, well, then what we could do is on the server, right? Whenever the player touches anything, we could just double check their position to ensure that, hey, they aren't inside of this part that is supposed to be collidable. And I've actually just looked this up on Google, right? So you can literally go ahead right now and look up 
um, anti-noclipse script Roblox, right? And, you know, you just get people discussing this stuff, right? You can continuously check the position, right? And then someone actually attached a video of what it looks like, right? So look, on the server, right, there's a wall. On the client, there is no wall, but when you try and move, it doesn't let you. So that's literally the idea, right? If there's an exploit in your game, you just quickly playtest, you quickly understand what the hell is going on, right? And then you just do a server check, you know, you do a security check to just ensure that, hey, the player isn't going somewhere where they're not supposed to, right? Like, for example, if I, I can delete this wall right now. On the server, it still exists, right? But for me, it doesn't exist anymore. So I can easily walk through it. However, like I said, what if on the server, I could just do a bunch of checks, right? And just say like, okay, if there's a player inside of this part and you know, they're not supposed to be inside of this part, we'll just teleport them back, right? You can easily, easily code a system like that. And even if you cannot code, you can just, again, like I said, you can go and look it up on Google. Like you can just literally use the code of other people. Yeah, so hopefully now you understand just how stupid the majority of developers are when it comes to making their game, you know, playable. It's like, I've played way too many games that have had like stupid exploits, which they, they just didn't bother fixing. If you agree with me that, you know, these developers are stupid, um, do subscribe, okay? Cause I'm gonna be posting a lot more content like this very soon. And yeah, so, you know, my course is on sale, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I will leave you with this final note though. While recording this, I just got this idea that it actually would be such a fun game. I don't know, like, like ima imagine that, like the player has to exploit a certain part of the game to, to, you know, succeed. Like, for example, there's like a wall, right? And like, the player has to exploit and like delete the wall on the client, and then you can let them pass, right? I don't know. I, I just think that'd be pretty fun. But all right, you know, as always, we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.